Okay. Dr. Fairbanks. Yes. The impact of human factors engineering on medication safety. How did you come to this field? Well, I used to be a safety engineer, and prior to going into medicine, I had a master's degree in human factors engineering and worked in safety engineering in the transportation area. And um, after I thought I had a change of career going into medicine, I finished medical school around the same time that the Institute of Medicine released a report uh, in the year 2000 on the big problem with patient safety. So that was the obvious area for me to develop a research program where I apply safety engineering and human factors engineering methodologies to the dilemmas in, in patient safety to try to improve system safety in the healthcare domain. So what have you found out about human factors engineering? Well, one of the problems in medicine is that unlike aviation and nuclear industries, which some time ago, uh, decades ago, realized that we didn't want to focus on human error as a focus of ways to improve safety and instead focus on system design. In medicine, we're still focusing on the human error component and doing what safety engineers like to call the name, blame, and train strategy, where when an adverse event occurs and we try to prevent it from occurring again in the future, our first reaction is to find out whose fault it is and uh, to focus on re-educating or remediating that person. While in fact the safety engineering approach would tell us um, to anticipate and expect human error and when an adverse event occurs that we should instead study the system components um, that led to that error. The idea is that human error is inevitable and it's a fact of life, and so we're wasting our resources if we focus on eliminating human error. And instead, assuming people are well-trained and well-prepared and intelligent about the way they do their job, they'll still make mistakes. And so the way to improve safety over time is to study what mistakes we can anticipate and then design a system to buffer the patient from those mistakes so that errors can occur, but the patient won't get hurt. Has it been hard to get uh, sys systems groups to buy into this because of the human factor, unlike building rockets, human lives really are at stake. I mean, they could be there too, but on a daily basis. And someone does want to hold someone accountable. That's true. You're, you hit the nail on the head. It is hard to get the medical community to focus on not needing to hold somebody accountable every time an error occurs. Um, now, other areas that we're what we call high-risk complex industries like the nuclear industry and the aviation industry that also have high stakes in terms of lives um, have been able to overcome this in, in several different ways, this, this approach and attitude. Um, and the problem is um, that we want to fix people when we see a mistake instead of fix the systems. Now there are some very good um, taxonomies and approaches that help us do both and take a middle road. And one that I like is the just culture taxonomy, which says that most errors are what we call normal errors that could happen to any well-trained, well-meaning practitioner like you or me. And um, the vast minority of mistakes are reckless behavior causes. Um, and the normal errors and the, and the workaround strategy errors that they call um, at-risk behavior should be handled uh, with a systems approach by supporting and coaching the practitioner and finding ways to avoid future problems when the same mistakes occur again, whereas the reckless behavior should be punished. So there is a, there is a punitive component, but it's much, rarely, much more rarely needed. So how, do you, how do you buffer the patients as examples of how do you do that? Um, there are some, some um, good examples would be a forcing function. For example, if you design a medical device to anticipate an error, if there's a high stakes error, one that can cause injury to a patient, then you would design a, the, the medical device to not allow that error to continue. Um, in the medication safety environment, a good example might be labeling that's similar in different medications so that if an error that we know we can anticipate might be that the wrong medication is stocked into the automated medication uh, dispenser drawer. So the nurse asks for the medication they intend to ask for, but the wrong medication pops up. One way to decrease adverse events given that error would be to have a different packaging, different color of the vials uh, so that the nurse recognizes that they've gotten the wrong medication. What do you want your colleagues to really understand and grasp about this issue? I think the fundamental place we have to start in healthcare right now is to get away from that name, blame, and train approach 
and to understand that most errors are committed by well-trained, well-meaning practitioners like you or me who come to work wanting to do a good job for a patient and who are set up by the environment to make an error. And that kind of error will be repeated time and time again. If we can have people understand that in the, in the fundamental um, beginnings of their career, then throughout their career they'll report errors and near misses that occur. And that allows system designers that are designing processes, medical devices, health IT systems, that'll allow those people to know where the errors are in order to design them out. Health systems by their nature, hospitals, whatever they are, are layered with administrators. You know? right. And now, you know, you can get the pharmacists and the healthcare professionals hands-on to buy in here, but how much more difficult it is to get everyone involved along the continuum to understand that it is the system we are trying to correct. It's interesting, my experience has been that more and more the healthcare leaders get this and they understand the value of the systems approach and they understand the value of error reporting and looking at the kinds of errors that are happening in their system. The harder area I find to change is the frontline workers right now. There's still a thick culture of feeling like if you make an error, that means you're not a good practitioner and you're not good at your job. And so there's a tendency to hide errors and not want to talk about them. So I think the place to start is change the culture in the front lines. How do you do that? That's a very tough question, but I think that the leadership and administration in hospitals starting to design things like just culture within their system and making it okay to talk about errors and including things like the aviation industry have done where reporting an error makes you immune from consequences of that error. I think those are the places to start. Dr. Fairbanks, thank you. Thank you.